Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with pumpkin seed brittle. That's right, we don't do a lot of candy videos, but I thought since we are getting close to America's biggest candy holiday, sorry Easter, of course I mean Halloween, I thought we'd do the seasonal take on classic peanut brittle. And besides the pumpkin seeds, what makes this very appropriate for a Halloween treat is that it's very scary to make. It's an extremely dangerous if you're not careful. So let's keep that in mind as we get started. And the first step here is we're going to add a little bit of sugar to a heavy bottom saucepan. All right, it's very important you use something heavy duty here. No thin cheap pans, please. And to the white sugar, we're going to add some corn syrup. And of course, this is just regular corn syrup, not the evil high fructose corn syrup, which really you should not eat ever. And then we'll also add a little splash of water. And then we're going to take a spatula and give that a mix until basically all that sugar looks wet. Okay, so keep stirring until it looks like that. And when that's done, the coast is clear to go ahead and add our butter. So I have five tablespoons of unsalted butter. And then what we're going to do is bring this to a boil on medium-high heat. And that's definitely going to take a few minutes to happen. So while we're waiting, we're going to want to make sure we have a couple other things ready to go. The first of which would be our baking soda. Very, very critical here. You're also going to want to have a whisk handy and some kind of sheet pan lined with a silpat. Word on the street is that you can also use parchment paper, although I've never tried that. And I'm also going to have a second one handy to put over the top of the brittle so I can press it nice and flat. Okay? And of course, you're going to need some pumpkin seeds. And for this, we're using raw pumpkin seed, which have that beautiful, beautiful green color. And to those seeds, I'm also going to add some coarse sea salt. And by the way, I know that looks like a ton, but that's because it's such a large grain. And we'll talk about that in the blog post, so don't get nervous. So make sure you get all that stuff organized ahead of time. And at this point, we can go back and check our sugar mixture, which should be boiling. And by the way, please feel free to use a bigger saucepan than this. I'm always trying to use what will film the best, not necessarily what will work the best. So I definitely could have used a little bigger pot here. Although it did work, I did want to point that out. So we're going to keep it on the heat. We're going to keep stirring. And eventually it will start to turn kind of a tan color. And eventually it will start to darken, as you can see right here. Although that's still a little pale, we want it to get a little darker than that. A little more caramely. So I'm going to keep it on the heat until we have something that looks like this. And of course you can go by temperature and use a candy thermometer. I don't personally, mostly because I don't have a candy thermometer. But the good news is just using your eyes will work perfectly. And if you want, when you think you're getting close, you can turn the heat down to medium so things don't happen quite so fast. But bottom line, you want to keep it cooking until we have something that looks like this. And when it gets to that point, we're going to go ahead and turn off the heat and whisk in very carefully, whisk in our baking soda. So we will sprinkle in the baking soda, whisking constantly. And be very, very careful. This is going to increase in volume. It's going to kind of foam and bubble up, which is one reason I really should be using a bigger pan here. I came about a half inch away from a mess of epic proportions. And that's because that baking soda is creating billions and billions of tiny, tiny bubbles, which is going to give this its signature brittle texture. All right, this is called pumpkin seed brittle, not pumpkin seed super hard rock candy. So like I said, the baking soda is key. And as soon as that's been stirred in, we're going to quickly dump in our pumpkin seeds, grab our spatula and stir that in quickly. But quick doesn't mean unsafe, so be very careful. This stuff is so unbelievably hot. If you splash this on yourself, you're going to get like third degree burns. Seriously. Maybe even fourth degree. Which is basically a third degree burn caused by something that's literally glued to your skin. But anyway, we're going to quickly and safely stir in those seeds. At which point we'll transfer that onto our prepared baking sheet. And we'll spread it out a little bit. And then I'm going to take my second sill pat, lay that over the top. And simply press it down. And for me, I like to do that with this heavy cast iron casserole dish which does a nice job of pressing. Of course, any flat object will work. You could simply use a small saute pan, do the same thing. Although right here, I got a little close to the edge and some squeezed out. So I simply took a small knife, since this is not hardened yet, and just cut it off. And I wanna be clear, I'm doing that not because it would have caused any problems, but because I wanted to taste it. But anyway, we're gonna press that flat. And as you'll see, this stuff is gonna harden up very, very quickly. So I gave mine about 30 seconds, and I peel back that top sill pat, at this point, you can just let it cool completely and break it up into irregular pieces. But if you want to do some nice, neat squares or triangles or whatever, you have a very short couple minute window while this is still a little bit soft to take a knife and score it. Now, a couple things here. Using a knife to cut on a sill pad is incredibly stupid. But this knife is incredibly dull. And also, you really don't need to go all the way through. You're basically just scoring this so you can go ahead and snap it off later. So I'm going to go ahead and score mine into squares. And then all I'm going to do is let this cool completely at which point I can start breaking you off a little something something. And by something something, I mean amazingly delicious pumpkin seed brittle. And as I mentioned, you certainly don't have to do any certain shapes. Traditionally, this is just snapped into our regular pieces. 
But that's really up to you. You are the YA tittle of your pumpkin seed brittle. At that point, we're pretty much done, except of course you should transfer this into some container appropriate for the occasion. So I decided to use a small wooden coffin. And where did I get that? Uh, trust me, you don't want to know. And I know it doesn't look that scary in the broad daylight, but if you dim those lights and put a little jack-o'-lantern next to it, oh man, that would be terrifying. But no matter the presentation, you are in for a fantastic sweet treat. So anyway, let me go in for the official taste. And if you're worried about all that sugar, don't. Pumpkin seeds are like a superfood. So when you take sugar and you add a superfood, they basically cancel each other out. And it's just like none of this ever happened, okay? So I really do hope you give this a try. Head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy. Enjoy.